Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Zechariah, which most people probably don't know where it is. So it's on page 868 in the Pew Bible. We'll be reading chapter 8, verses 16 to 23, and Lauren's going to help me with that. These are the things that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another, and love no false oath, for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, and of the the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be seasons of joy and gladness, and cheerful festivals for the house of Judah. Therefore, love truth and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come, the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go forth, saying, come let us go to entreat the favor of the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem, and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from nations of every language shall take hold of a Jew, grasping his garment and saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of John chapter 6, verses 28 to 40, which can be found on page 974 of the Pew Bible. And the word reads as follows. Then they said to him, meaning Jesus, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the word of the Lord. What do you want for Christmas? Yeah, I used to sing that all the time until I lost one of them. I'm not going to sing that anymore. This is a question we've all heard and we've all asked of others. We ask our family, we ask loved ones, we ask friends. Then, of course, there's the secret Santas at work that some of us have participated in. I would venture to say, and maybe you agree with me, is that it is probably the most asked question during the Christmas season. Is that a safe bet, you think? We ask because we care. And we want to give good gifts to those we care about. Something they will like, something they'll be thrilled by. Have you ever bought something for someone that you know they are going to love and you can't wait to see the expression on their face when they open it up? You ever do that? That's cool, right? Isn't that fun? I know Lauren gets tickled when she feels she has bought someone the perfect gift. And she's really good at that. You know, I'm I'm terrible at it. So I'm I'm constantly feeling inferiority complexes where she's concerned. She's like, oh, I got this for you. And and then when I I think about what I got her, I was like, this is not as good. So I always tried to like 
just do it by numbers. So if she bought me five things, I'll buy her 15 things. Maybe it'll make it up. Um, so um, I was looking online while I was researching this sermon, and I came across a list of things, and this is what it was called. What you want for Christmas. Not what do you want, but what you want. So I'm like, so I was like, oh. And then I came across a list of 50 things that you should ask for for Christmas. I don't think I could come up with 50 things to ask for Christmas. But anyhow, what this is the list of what you want for Christmas. This is what this thing was telling us. This is what we want. Here's the top five. You ready? Let's go. A beautiful 3D levitating moon lamp with gradual changing light. Two, the original board for relaxing water painting. Three, a two-in-one wireless charger with adjustable phone holder. Hmm. Four, a stylish smart mug, app-controlled heated coffee mug. Keep your coffee warm with your phone, right? And five, Burt's Bees skincare gift set. This is the top five. Anybody ask for any of those five things? Did any of them make your list? Not this year? Any year for that matter? <laughs> yeah, me neither. And I did not, I can say with complete surety, I did not get any of those for Lauren. Sorry. Babe. I think the ladies like the Bird's Bees skincare gift set, though. That's not there. It was like, ooh, yeah. So I thought this morning, instead of asking each other, what do you want for Christmas? How about we ask God what he wants for Christmas? And I, you know, I don't mean what we want for Christmas. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amens. Work hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh, Lord. Won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a color TV? Okay, I'm going to stop there. All thanks to Janis Joplin for that, as she called it, a very socially important song. Did anyone get a response in their spirit just then? If I were to imagine, I think that there are certain things that God would have us do. So, okay. Here's what I want you to do with me, okay? Everybody look up. Everybody look up and repeat after me. God, what do you want for Christmas? Anything? Feel anything? I think there are certain things, if I were to imagine, I think there are certain things that God would have us do as Christmas presents, because he doesn't really need anything, does he? I mean, he is God after all, right? I don't think he needs a pair of socks or, you know, mittens or scarf or anything. So let's see what God would have us do. Every time I ask this morning, what do you want for Christmas? I want you to imagine that we are asking God that question. Okay? Everybody with me? You guys are great. Let's go. First, let's establish who is the greatest gift giver of all time. James 1.17. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Or perhaps you're familiar with this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, so God is obviously the greatest giver ever. So what could he possibly want for us? I'm so glad you asked that. You guys are great. I love the support. What do you want for Christmas? In the book of Micah, the people were asking 
what they could give God to make up for their sins. They even asked if they could sacrifice their own children or some other hard thing. And God answered through the prophet and said this, No, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your gods. It's Micah 6, 8. This is what God required of us, to do what is right. Some versions read to do justice. Same idea, to love mercy. And this means to love extending mercy to other people, not loving God's mercy, because we all love that. And to walk humbly with your God. Don't be puffed up. Don't get all into yourself. Know that all you are and all you have is from him. Be humble. Okay, that puts it very concisely. This is what God wants. But is that it? It seems too easy, maybe? Well, as I said during the pageant, when the wise men came and gave baby Jesus gold and frankincense, I said, but wait, there's myrrh. Uh, come on, I can usually get a groan. Come on, guys. Uh. <sighs> as, we read, as we read this morning from the book of Zechariah, but this is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. Render verdicts in your courts that are just and that lead to peace. Don't scheme against each other. Stop your love of telling lies that you swear are the truth. I hate all these things, says the Lord. Hmm. What do you want for Christmas? Justice, peace, truth. Is anyone feeling a little uncomfortable yet? Because I know I am. It's, uh, it's not quite so easy now. How about we ask Jesus what he wants for Christmas? Or better yet, how about we ask Jesus what he wants for his birthday? Have you ever done that? It's kind of a cool idea. In Matthew 22, they came to him and said, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And you know, the Pharisees, they're always trying to figure an angle, right? What is the greatest commandment? Aren't you supposed to keep them all? But they figured, well, maybe if we kept the greatest one, we could get away with it. So they expected him to list one of the 10. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. If I may paraphrase, love God and love people. It's the same thing we read in Micah. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Love God and love people. It's the same thing we read in Zechariah. Stop lying and scheming. God says he hates these things. Love God and love people. It doesn't sound too difficult, right? But it sure takes work to achieve. Love God and love people. People are not so lovable sometimes, are they? Hmm. Some effort on our part is required. Like the toy you buy for the kids at Christmas, remember? Some assembly required. Those are the most terrifying words in the English language right along with batteries not included. So love is not just a noun. It's not just a feeling. It is a verb requiring action to love. We often hear people ask, oh, what's God's will for my life? If I only knew God's will, I would do it. Another way to say that is, what do you want for Christmas? We read in the Gospel of John this morning, they asked Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? They, wanted, they expected some really big, crazy thing that they had to do. You know, like walk up the stairs on their knees and do all this crazy stuff. Like, oh, he's going to make it hard on us. What did he say? The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. 
It's probably easy to walk up the stairs on their knees and for them to do that. How do we do the works of God? It begins with belief in Jesus. This is God's will, as Jesus continued. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. What do you want for Christmas? When Solomon dedicated the temple, and he really, David had collected all the materials for it. It was the most amazing temple ever. It was crazy. He, he sacrificed hundreds of thousands of animals to consecrate this temple. It was amazing. Never seen anything like it before or since. And after he dedicated the temple and after he prayed this beautiful prayer, that night God came to him in a dream, and this is what he said. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If it is conditional, if we humble ourselves. And that seems to be a very hard thing for our self-reliant selves to do, our pull yourselves up by our bootstraps, our self-made people that we are, the problem solvers, the ones who can figure it all out. If we humble ourselves, know God as our authority and submit to him, seek God, pray, read his word, study it, fellowship with other Christians, ask God to guide our steps and turn from our wicked ways. Wicked ways? Are we wicked? Well, anybody ever here, have anybody here ever not sin? Anybody never sin? Anybody here? Yeah, I just sin because I'm lying. Um, maybe conceal the truth, maybe indulge in a little ungodly behavior, maybe live a me-centered life, maybe think we've arrived without God's help, which we would never say, of course. Maybe we acted a little selfish. Maybe we avoid helping others. Maybe we fail to tithe, or maybe we laugh at other people's mistakes, or maybe we adopt racist or hateful ideas. Maybe we act phony. Maybe we gossip or backbite. Wicked ways. We have fallen short of the glory of God at one time or another. Ouch. And God says, repent. And repent is a word that just means turn. Turn to him. Turn to God. Turn to Jesus. Just turn. That's all it means. You know, we think it's this big religious thing with somebody, repent! Fire and brimstone stuff. No, it's not. It's repent. Turn. Turn to me. I'm right here. Jesus said, come unto me. And if we do this, then what? It's an if-then argument. Then what? Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive your sin, and I will heal your land. And why is the humbling part so important? Well, Peter tells us in his book, yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Comma, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. That's good news. It's great news, in fact. God cares. He makes the way for our redemption. See, when you're not humble, you can't cast your cares on God because you can figure it out yourself. Does that make sense? I know you guys are still out there. I can hear you breathing. But James, James agreed with this in his book. He said, but God gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee 
from you. Hmm. But you got to submit to God first. Submit to God. This humility stuff seems pretty powerful. And why does God resist the proud? Quite simply because when we are proud, God is not on the throne of our hearts. We are. And that gets in the way of every single thing that God wants to do for us and through us. Prayers are useless when we are proud. So if we humble ourselves, then he will heal our land. He will forgive our sins. With all these tornadoes we just had, COVID-19, wildfires, mass shootings, does anybody think our land needs healing? What do you want for Christmas, Lord? And this is not only just this country that would be healed. If we follow this formula for humility and seeking God, the whole earth can be healed. Imagine the if, if people everywhere would just learn humility, desire it. If we do that, we can expect this prophecy from Isaiah 2.4 and Micah 4.3 to, to come completely true. The Lord will mediate between peoples and will settle disputes between strong nations far away. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for war anymore. Imagine. In other words, true peace would result. What do you want for Christmas? Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Right. God gave us the way to achieve that. Love God and love people. The greatest gift we can give the greatest giver. What does God want for Christmas? No more than your heart and soul. Would you? Could you? Wrap that up for him this Christmas? Imagine his delight as he opens your gift, filled with your humble self, your belief in the only begotten son, Jesus, whose birth we celebrate, your humility, your prayer, justice, and truth, your willingness to seek him, to turn from the wicked ways, to take hold of the salvation that's being handed to you. Give him your heart. Make God smile. Love God and love people. Amen? Amen.